What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Valheim. I have got some building tips and ideas really for you guys to um, go ahead and you know, sort of maybe inspire some of your building in game. And um, yeah, show off the little base I've just finished recently. Well, I say finished, I'll no doubt add to it as I get further through the game. But it seemed like a good time to talk about a few ideas and tips, like I said, so let's get on with it. So the first thing I want to mention is the use of rivers in Valheim. I really enjoy um, using the rivers in this game. It's an awesome way to explore. Um, it's great for mining tin when you're early game as well with your boat. You can carry loads of tin on your boat and farm it up nice and easy. But also, it's a great route through the map and to discover things and find different biomes, etc. And of course, it's a big part of what the Vikings really did do. They did use rivers to get in deep into the heart of um, new land when they found it. And uh, yeah, I took that on board and decided I was going to do that with my bases or wherever possible. And this river was awesome. It goes through the Black Forest. There's a meadow the other side of my base, which you can see coming up now. And on the other side of the meadow is the swamp. And it's all really close together. You can see there, that's the swamp. This is the meadow. This is my base here in the, in the Black. So I got really lucky with this. But um, yeah, like I said, the river's an awesome place to set up shop to build a base oh, let's get some paddle on the go here i just wanted to mention that before we got on with things because um yeah i think it's a good little tip i think it's a good idea for building it's nice to be on on the river like i said good access through good for exploration and uh just looks cool as well and here we go so we've got a simple dock now there's lots of questions over the um the way the structures work when they're in the water. So you can see here, this is all like taken damage, but as soon as it had settled down, so I placed the pieces, and after a couple of seconds, once it had all settled in and worked out its structure strength and that kind of thing, it immediately goes down to like 50% HP and it stays there. This has been here for days and days and days in game. It's been through lots of storms and stuff already, and the Damage, obviously that's loader, that was from actual uh, monster damage I believe. Um, but as you can see it's all pretty much the same, it's not really changed. Um, so I believe it just automatically drops down to sort of 50% HP, it gives it this weathered look and then it will just stay there. So obviously it's a you know, um, risk from damage from mobs and that kind of stuff. But it won't collapse as long as you've got the structure strength like this. Um, it will just stay exactly as it is. And welcome to my humble abode. This is what I'm calling England, because it's swampy, it's foresty, and it's meadowy. <laughs> so it's England, that's what England is. So all I've done with the outside is just use the um, core wood logs to give the, the building some character. Um, I thought it looked much nicer than just plain wood. I obviously created them windows as well, which I think look quite nice. But let's go inside and we'll take a look around. So you come into the main hall, the great hall. We've got a stone half which I've surrounded with some more logs. I think it just adds a bit more detail to it. It looks quite nice, I think. Obviously scattered some deer hide rugs around. Um, hopefully as I get further through, I might unlock some more decorations. Could do some more decorations. Uh, just realised I didn't get around to putting up any wall hangings, some deer heads and that kind of stuff. I think that'd look really nice in here. And obviously we've got the banners hanging up. You just create them in the furniture. Um, I can't remember when I unlocked them, but yeah, you do unlock them eventually and you just use berries, leather scraps and fine wood to create them. Um, charcoal for black, blueberries for the blue banner like I'm using, raspberries for white and red striped banner, and blood bags which you get from leeches in the swamp to make a red banner. And they look really smart, I really do like them. Obviously I had them hanging outside as well, looking cool. And these windows, so that's just the fence fence pieces, and I just thought it looked much nicer than just having open windows like that, because that's just obviously like an entire wall missing, basically. So I surrounded it with the logs, added in the fencing, and I think that's, that gave a real nice look to it. 
Yeah, just a cool little idea. And the fence pieces do snap to the edges. You just look at the edge of the wall and it should line up. Get it centered and then do the same the other side and you end up with this little cross hatch effect in the middle. So we've got the little raised dais here, which is something I believe Great Halls would have had back in the day, or some of them would have had. This would have been where the Earl and his inner circle would have sat, and then down here would have been for the rest of the crew. And again up there, you can see we've got a little balcony. We'll go and have a look up there in a second, again making use of the fence pieces. Um, I've just been experimenting with what I can use other stuff for as... You know, so like the fencing using it as decorations, obviously using the beams and the logs as decoration and detailing. You can see in here, you might have noticed I've got the angled beams just to break up the boring flat face of the wooden wall. And obviously the uh, dragon head at the top there. And through here we got the workshop. Obviously it's an L shape, so we've got the great hall leading it into the workshop. With some basic storage in here, I'm going to add a lot more storage. I might even build a storage shed outside or something. Uh, but this is fine for now. I do need to upgrade my storage boxes with the um, bigger storage boxes, which I have unlocked now. And I made use of these stairs to make a little larder type deal down here just stuff i don't use very often or i've got excess amount of resources like feathers and bones and that kind of stuff just chuck it in a box down here and then obviously the main workshop area with room for all the upgrades i've not finished upgrading these yet um i do need to get a few more upgrades done but plenty of room for them to come in here as well and add to the decoration as well as the functionality and I love this little upgrade, the forge tool rack is a really cool um, piece of decoration as well as obviously serving as an upgrade for the forge. And I'm really happy with this, this cooking area. So this is all set on logs, which is how I've got the fires inside. So there's logs all under there, the core wood, using the log effect. And then you can put the fires on the top along with the cooking racks and the pots. And if I come outside, you'll be able to see what I've done here to create a chimney now i've put these small walls coming down off the roof there to try and stop any weather because for some reason even though this is well and truly inside some of these randomly go out as you can see there i'm not too sure why as you can see there, they've all come back on again and then that one's gone out i'm not i'm not too sure what's going on but either way this works brilliantly you can stand anywhere around here you don't get any kind of um smoke debuff um smoke damage and if you come outside and walk under here, you do get the smoke damage. So it's working really well. And if I just remove this, you'll be able to see. So you've just got a built up with the wall and then left a half wall gap at the top. And that's created the uh, chimney to let the smoke out. And again, I've just put these on to try and stop the weather. I don't know if it did make a difference. It doesn't happen as much, but as you see, it did just keep randomly going out. But yeah, so you put the core logs down, I think that's four or five wide, and then spread the fires out along the top. I just butt each stone up on the edge of the fires up to each other to get them to sit like that. Turn the racks the other way around and then they all fit perfectly and you can access all of them as you can see. And the cauldron. And again, just using the logs and the beams to add decoration. Um, these front ones don't need to be there. I've just done that to build out a little bit and make it look nice. And I think it come out really well. I'm really happy with it. It's definitely the best cooking station I've made so far in the game. And if we come up the stairs, we come up onto the balcony looking down into the great hall. Again, more decoration with the logs. Just using logs for detailing and to break up the wood. Again, you can see one up there. Literally serves no purpose other than just to break that wooden look up from the Great Hall. And this is my little portal room. Um, got a few portals, got one spare. Because one thing I've noticed is I keep running off and exploring and then realising I haven't put a portal down to lay another one to jump back. So I've got a portal ready. I've got all the materials I need to make another portal. So next time I go out exploring to look for another biome, I can slap down a little hut and I can jump straight back here, no problems if I need to. 
and um, yeah, I can sort out the portal later and build a better base wherever I might be and uh, yeah, get back here nice and easy. So yeah, good tip. Make sure when you go exploring to put a portal down beforehand so that you can jump back nice and quick. And you can see we've got these ones linked to other outposts. And then we come into my boudoir, my little bedroom. Fit for an earl. Two beds slammed together to make it look like a double bed. Random storage that I don't really need. I've just put it in here for decoration. Got my um gonna have my armor and weapons and stuff up here. Need to build a personal chest. I have got that available now. And then I've just got some valuables in the chest here, just keep them up here out of the way. And again, more use of the logs. These logs are awesome. You can really make things look a lot nicer and break up the boring wood effect with them. And again, some more windows. And all I did there was take out three walls and then surround the edge with the logs and then put two logs in the middle to give that windowed effect. And this is pretty cool as well. So these are the, um, what are they, 26 degrees, I believe? 26 degree roof cross. And you can stick them together to make this little barrier type effect, like a railing. And when you put them on the edge of a a floor tile they sink down a little bit so they don't stick up so they're they sit down a bit lower let me just show you what I mean by that it's a bit clumsy to explain <laughs> let's pick this up so rather than sitting up like this when you put them on the edge of a ceiling tile they slot down and it just makes them sit a bit lower and uh, I think it, it's a nice effect it gives and again more <laughs> use of the fencing on the edge here to break up the stairwell and to make it look nice and obviously create a little larder behind it again more windows exactly the same like I said upstairs just take out the walls surround the edge with the logs and there you've got a window and then you can either leave them open or you can put the fencing in and then outside I've got my little smelting area gonna add some more of these in but at the moment we've got two wood burners, two charcoal burners, and two smelters. I'll just skip the night time, go to bed quickly. So this area I'm going to cultivate and have some plants in here, grow some carrots, that kind of stuff. It's good to have a few workbenches around your base. Um, these are left over from building my wall, which we'll look at in a moment. Uh, but you could place these better and make them look more you know, decorative, but I think they're okay though. I'm just going to leave them there for practicality. So, I'm pretty happy with this wall. The normal stone blocks look pretty, pretty boring, not going to lie. Let me just um, take these down. Oh, I can't, I'm too far away. <laughs> so we'll do it on this one. Should we take these away? So as you can see, it's kind of boring, a bit jaggedy. You can see that I've not quite lined them up properly. Um, just the way I've curved the wall around, etc. And um, yeah, I started building this wall and I was like, oh, I don't know if I like that. Didn't really want to use the palisade because I've got so much stone. I just figured I'd rather use the stone for this than burning through my wood all the time. And I figured oh, I'll see what it looks like with the logs. And all you do is just snap the logs to the top, and then I snap this one to the top of the bottom one to give it a little bit of a bigger gap. And once you've got one in, you can just follow the line along, turn with the angles. And originally I just done that, and I thought that looks pretty cool. And then you can, I thought, do you know what, it'd look better if I break it, break it up, and do the verticals. And on places like this. It helps um, make the wall look a bit better where there's a few gaps. And there you go. I think that looks much nicer than just a normal stone wall. It actually looks like that's how it's meant to be, um, I think. But it's pretty cool. I like it. I like the effect it gave. And some really easy, cheap defense is whip out your pickaxe and dig a trench all the way along your outer wall and that way mobs just fall down it you don't have to worry about the um, mob raids the random events 
they just fall down there if they even bother to come over here. And once they're in there, you can just shoot them with a bow and arrow or do whatever you want to do to them. But as you can see with the log effect on the wall, I think that does look pretty cool with the um, lodge or long haul sat behind it, whatever you want to call it. And that trench comes all the way down to this side. And so if I've not had any problems from any mobs trying to get in, they just, you know, they're stuck out here and that's the end of it. But it's really effective having a trench along the wall, that's for sure. To be honest, with the stone wall, you're probably alright with just the stone wall. But I've noticed since I've been here, I've randomly had troll raids and I've had trolls coming down the mountain and trying to get in. Um, and yeah, so I just figured just to be safe, I'd put a trench in as well. And yeah, like I said, it's been really effective so far. So the other detailing I've done was on the roof. You can see there I've used beams to go along each section of the roof tiles all the way up to the top and then I've lined the edge with logs. So you can see there's like double log at the top because I've used the logs to break up the wall and then I put another row along the top to go along the end of the roof. And I think it looks pretty nice. And if I go up to the top, you can see there's actually a beam or log beam all the way along the top there and another little tip for when you're building on roofs these steep roofs um, what are they 45 degrees they're a real pain to try and stay on so I just like to use the single floor tile to act as little stepping stones and that way you can stand there and do whatever you're doing like I said you can see they've used the beams to split up each section of roofing and then if I jump right on the top, you can see the log beam running all the way along the top. And these are the cross sections I've used on the top of each section of beams, just to finish them off and cap them off. And I thought it looked kind of cool. I couldn't do it on this one because the roof isn't actually as tall as this side. But one thing I was trying to do is to see if I could make a cross section with the beams, which did. Which, when I put them along here, it didn't look right because I couldn't put them in certain places. Like, for example, where this roof joins this roof and where the little chimney is there. So, I deleted them, but I decided to leave these front ones in. And I think that gives a pretty cool effect. And this is just a simple chimney to let the smoke out from the half down below. And I do really like these beams and logs on the roof. Um, it does make a massive difference to the detailing and just really gives it a lot of character. And if I come down into the interior, you can see how I made the chimney there. So on the top of the first roof piece, just there, you can see that's the roof piece here. And on the top of it, I just snapped two of these wood floor one by ones and then put a half wall on the top and then I put a half wall going across from one side to the other to sit the roof on up there, which is one of these roofs that way around. So it's there. I didn't want it there. I wanted it higher up, which is why I put the walls up there. If we like that back up, you can see it's going up through the chimney. So there we go, guys. There's a few helpful, hopefully helpful, um, ideas and a few little tips as well. And a little look at my current base this is basically gonna be my main base now just because of its location you can see the swamp down there in the black forest in between here and the swamp is a meadow area as well so a real nice little location but again i hope this was helpful i hope you can get some cool ideas from this and some useful tips if you enjoyed it don't forget to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button for more valheim videos and i'll be back to live streaming soon as well so don't forget to ring that little bell so you don't miss when i go live thanks for watching guys stay safe and i'll see you soon